In this video, I'll show you how to hollow out a ceramic sculpture before firing in a kiln. This process can feel very intimidating at first, but I assure you that once you do it, it will free you up to sculpt in a whole new way. You want to begin from the top and work your way down. With a wire tool, I begin to cut the sculpture into sections that will be easy to manage. You want to pull the wire tool as straight as possible to maintain even seams. I'm using a loop tool to hollow out the inside. You want to go slow with this process at first to get a feel for the tools in relation to the clay. I'm leaving the outer wall of the sculpture about three quarters of an inch thick. I periodically check the width of the sculpture by pinching the wall. Once both pieces are hollowed out, you can put the pieces back together by scoring the edge with a wire brush tool. When you score the surface, you want to create cross-hatched lines to introduce slip into. You do this on both pieces that will be attached together. I prepare the slip with the same clay I'm sculpting with. I like to apply the slip with a brush onto the scored area. You want to work the slip into the scored area and make sure you're getting into the cracks thoroughly. Now I place the pieces back together with gentle pressure and I wrap it up with a plastic and set it aside. With a wire tool, I'm cutting the sculpture down the center. and cutting the sections in half. I'm laying the pieces flat on the table and being careful not to damage the sculpture. With a round loop tool, I'm hollowing out the torso in the same way that I did with the head. I'm creating guidelines with my initial cuts. It's much easier to hollow out the sculpture with the guidelines in place Once the bulk of the clay is removed, you can go in and refine the inside of the sculpture and make sure the walls are evenly carved out. You want to wedge the clay back together as soon as possible and set it aside for later use. I repeat the process of hollowing out each section the same way by first creating guidelines that are approximately three quarters of an inch thick. It's helpful to draw the guidelines along each surface of each section before scooping out the clay. Once the entire piece has been hauled out, I begin putting the pieces back together, starting from the bottom, by first scoring the area along the wall's edge, adding a generous amount of slip, and pressing the pieces back together by creating friction, the pieces will begin to bond together. If you're able to smooth the inside of the sculpture seam, I recommend doing that. It will reinforce the entire sculpture.
follow along the entire seam and make sure the pieces are bound together. Once the sculpture is put back together, you want to cut a small groove along the seam with a loop tool. Wherever there is a seam, follow along the entirety of the sculpture and create this groove. With the clay that I scooped out of the sculpture and wedged thoroughly, I roll out some coils. I paint slip along the groove and press the coil into it. I want to reinforce the seam by creating an extra bond with the coil by smearing it in on both sides of the surface. Once the sculpture is put back together, I like to add more additional detail. With this piece, I'm going to be adding a texture of fabric, kind of a motion, a movement with the sculpture. And so I'm creating little guidelines for where I'd like the fabric pieces to be. It's not so much that she's going to have fabric laying on her body, but more that she is the fabric. This sculpture isn't too dry. It's still pretty workable, and so I'm able to add the coils directly to the piece, just with a little bit of water and pressure, and I'm smearing it in with this flat wooden tool and with my fingers. Fabric is very interesting because it has a look like water, kind of ripples. And I guess that's what I'm going for is this rippling movement along the torso. And so I just rolled out coils from the clay that I had wedged earlier and I'm just kind of draping them in the areas that add movement to the piece. Once I had the shapes that I was going for, I came in and added additional detail and I'm gonna begin carving away parts of the sculpture to really make it look as if there's just fabric moving. I'm using an X-Acto knife and cutting out little pieces. An X-Acto knife is a great tool for accurate cuts with clay. This piece is based on a sculpture I made many years ago and it's a commission for somebody who saw the sculpture years ago and, and wanted one similar. And it's really interesting to revisit old concepts. She wanted the eyes to be more closed, so I ended up adding extra eyelids 
and basically re-sculpting the eyes completely. And this is how it turned out.